to do the Christmas dinner. Is that all right with everybody? December 12th. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll have any weather concerns, but I don't really want to do it the last week of, you know, going into Christmas. So I think that will give us leeway, and if some, something happens, we have to reschedule. We can do it the following week. But as it stands, uh, we'll do the Christmas dinner the 12th after church. Is that good? We hadn't had time to discuss it, but I figured we'd better bring it up. It's just getting December. Uh, Wednesday night, we can announce it because Don Barney is not here. But we're going to have a little birthday party for Don Barney before church. So you either come on Wednesday. It's not going to hurt anybody to go to the Dollar Tree, pick him up a gift or something. Just a little something, let him know you think about it. Uh, everything that gets fixed around here, 99% uh, of it is Don Barney. Uh, the mowing of the grass and the weed eating is Don Barney. Uh, we have we owe the Barney so much, you know. Helen, I don't know. Troy was just talking about the Christmas tree, but uh, have you been in the bathrooms? Have you been in the Sunday school rooms? I mean, every room in this church, she is decorated. Uh, even the tablecloths, covering the stuff in the in the Bible study room and all, just everything is Christmassy. Every room, every hallway. Every little nook and cranny got something to do. Even the bathrooms is decorated for Christmas. Amen. And we thank Helen for that. But we want to give Don a good night Wednesday. Uh, we're going to do some cake and ice cream. And I think we'll do some soup. Soup for chili. And y'all get in on it. You want to bring something? That's great. You want everybody bring a little something. Uh, go in the closet and dig out a can of sirloin soup or chunky <laughs> soup or candle soup, dump it in a bowl or something, bring it to church, you know. But we'll all have a good time and we'll have a little birthday party for Don. Uh, pray for Don that he feels better and uh, you know, he's just, he's a terrific person. He's getting old just like all the rest of us but I look at him and I see a lot of spunk and uh, he gets around better than a lot of us younger folks do. And uh, I'm just proud to know them. I thank them. And like I say, Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday, Bible study, 6 o'clock, we'll have a little something for Don Barney. And then we're going to have Bible study. So you're all welcome to come and have a good time. Announce it. Tell everybody you can. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Philippians, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. Philippians 4 and 4. Good to see everybody in church this morning. Always, I always enjoy Baylor's pictures when she puts them in little suits and outfits and all. He's like a little grown man sitting there shaking. Looks like he knows how to take pictures anyway. I wish I was photogenic. I've never been that way. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's just good to be. I'm glad y'all had the Thanksgiving, wonderful Thanksgiving. But we've got a lot coming up. Christmas is coming up. Pray for Faye Dawson. Everybody says she's supposed to be trying to come Wednesday. So pray that she'll have the strength enough to come. And pray for my mother that God gives her strength and a large appetite where she'll gain about 100 pounds. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I want to see her gain about at least 75 to 100. Oh, uh, and I'll just give her mine. I, I'll take it off of me and give mine to her. So I think we can all donate a few pounds. I've been on a, my stepson giving me a diet to go on this week. It's got all kind of uh, smoothie diet. And I really like the taste of it. Spinach, kale, chocolate, almond milk, and uh, dark cherries. And I tell you what, it's really delicious. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really good. I have to say, it's really good. And the effects are wonderful also. So maybe later on this year, I can lose a few pounds. I need to lose some. I've been steadily gaining for a while. But uh, I'm trying to get more active and do more stuff. Feeling better now, so everything's good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for such a beautiful day where we can come to your house and serve you. Lord, it's a wonderful place to come worship you. Forgive us for our many sins and transgressions. Lord, forgive me. And Lord, I pray this will be the prayer of the congregation. We'll all leave out of here better people. And we'll draw closer to you. And Lord, Father, I pray a blessing upon each and every household in this place. 
And Lord, I thank you so much for the things you've done for us, even though we don't deserve them. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our jobs and our incomes that you give us. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. And we just come by today to say thank you. Lord, we can't never say thank you enough, but thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I say, again, I say rejoice. You can just preach a message on that. Rejoice in the Lord always. You know, do you really rejoice like you ought to? Come on. Are you happy like you? I know I'm not. My wife looked at me at the mall last night. And she said, you're just a misery to be around tonight. <laughs> and I, I reckon I was. You know, my legs was getting kind of tired from walking. And I was getting hot. You know, I don't know why to keep TJ Maxx uh, just a shade lower than Hades. But that's what they keep it. <laughs> But I was in there just sweating up a storm and the line was wrapped around the building and I just wasn't a very pleasant person. Have you ever been like that? Yeah. But that ain't what the Bible said. He said, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I said, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Your moderation be known unto all men. In other words, you need balance in life. Amen. Amen. You, you need balance. You need moderation. Uh, we need to come to church. Amen. We need to study God's word. We need to take portion of our day and we need to pray. Amen. The Bible says pray without ceasing. That's right. But I would be happy if a lot of folks would just pray 15 minutes a day. Amen. You know, if, if we could just get, you know, some people to pray a few minutes a day, it would be wonderful because once you start praying just a few minutes, you'll want to pray more and more and more and more. That's right. A lot of times at night, I wake up praying, DJ. Right. And, you know, I don't wake up meaning to start praying but i just wake up and all of a sudden i said lord forgive me of my sins lord wash me and you wash me again clean me up and you know in the middle of the night a lot of times you know the lord comes to us and he talks to us while we're sleeping he, he comes to us in our dreams and and we need to do all things in moderation people are watching us and how we live we need to walk and talk accordingly because somebody is watching every move you make. I noticed today when I walked out of the office, the little boy, his eyes was fixed on me. Somebody is watching you. And I don't care where you go. I don't care what part of the country you go in. Somebody will have to be there you know, Joey. Exactly. So you need to be on your toes at all times. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God with thanksgiving. You know, we don't always need to come to the Lord, Lord, give me this and give me that and heal my body and do this and do that. Amen. How many times do you just start with the prayer, thank you, Lord. Come on, God. Thank you, God, for being so good to me. Amen. Man, the house I live in, I don't deserve it. The cars I own, I don't deserve it. The money in my bank account, I don't deserve it. The wife and the family I have, I don't deserve it. The stuff I got in the house, Rayford, I didn't deserve it. The ones that love me and the people who's been good to me, I don't deserve it. But God's mercy and by the grace of God, he loves us. And I just can't say enough to the Lord, thank you for loving me and being good to me, Margaret, when I didn't deserve it. I deserve death. I deserve a lot of things, but I don't deserve the life I live. You say, why have I got it? Because of the mercy and grace of God, I stand here today. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my life. How many of you just thought, thank the Lord for your life that you live? Yeah. Our worst days, yeah. our worst days are better than most yeah. people's best days. I want you to understand that. The life you live, and you, sometimes you think you're going through a lot of misery and a lot of pain, but I want you to understand your worst day is better than a lot of people's best days. If you don't believe me, we'll take you to the homeless part of town. We'll take you to some people in these apartments who don't have anything. I know a lot of people on my old mail route, some of the older ladies just had one piece of furniture in the living room. Some of them didn't have enough to eat on. You say, why? Wow, they didn't have anything. And today you said in this church you're blessed and God has blessed you. He's provided for you. You can eat all you want, anytime you want. You go anywhere you want, drive anything you want. And we ought to be the most thankful people there is for what God has done for us. Thank you, Lord. 
He said, and peace of God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, through Christ Jesus. You know, this is not what I'm preaching on. I'm getting to it. <laughs> this is just extra. It ain't going to cost you nothing. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Do you have any peace in your life? Think about it. Peace, Jesus Christ is the peace, the Prince of Peace. Yep. Amen. And without Jesus, you can't have peace. You can't have joy and happiness without Jesus. The only joy and happiness you can have without Jesus is temporal. Amen. It's not going to last. Right. You get in a whiskey bottle, it's only temporal. Amen. You smoke drugs, it's only temporal. It's only going to be temporary. But with Jesus Christ, you can have love, joy, and peace without ending. Isn't it nice to know you have a love without ending? You know, when we look at these children, they, they love you without ending. They love you and it's pure. It's, it's pure. When the babies come up and they hug you and tell you they love you, you know they mean what they say. Well, let me tell you today, somebody who really loves you, his name is Jesus. And Jesus loved you enough to die for your sins. To die that you can have life and have life more abundantly. And he says right here, And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Other people ain't going to understand how you can be peaceful and happy with what's going on in the world today. And that's what I want to talk about. Changing your life. Changing your life. The Bible says, here's what I want to talk about. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Think on these things. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18 and 4, a person's words can be a life-giving water. Amen. And I want you to understand today, the things you speak and the things you say in your daily routine, your daily life, Absolutely. is going to affect everything about your life. Amen. Amen. We don't need to think negative about everything. Come on, we don't need to talk down and bad about everything. We don't need to sit like we're a news reporter at the table or at the chair talking about all the bad going on in the world all the time. I want to have a good time. How many of y'all want to have a good time? Don't you want to have fun? Well, when you start to eat a good meal and start to have fun, don't you hate it when somebody looks up and starts telling you how bad the world is today? We know how bad the world is today. Amen, amen. We know how bad things are today. We know we don't like the president. We know we don't like a lot of things going on. We know we don't like the gas prices. We know we don't like the vaccine. We know there's a lot of things we don't like in this country. Amen. But I can't change it unless God changes it. Only thing I can do is pray. That's right. I don't need to dwell on the bad things. Come on, I don't need to dwell on the evil things going on. I don't need to dwell what's bad going on in my community. What I need to dwell on is the goodness of God. He said, if there be anything, what? If there be anything honest, I need to think on the honest stuff. I need to think on the uh, things that are just. I need to think on the things that are pure. I need to think on the things that are of a good report. I don't need to dwell on the bad all the time. We used to go to Martinsville, Virginia back when I was a little boy. And during the holidays, we was traveling from Hampton, Virginia. And me and mom and dad would roll up in there. It'd be about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And granny would start cooking the coffee. And I had a little tool set. I'd start working on the washing machine. And they would sit to the wee hours of the morning, Joey. And granny was telling us about all the bad that's going to happen. And the whole time you was there, what well, she'd be talking about the bad things that was going to happen. The bad things coming up. I don't remember her telling me no time. Oh, it's so good to see y'all. and So glad y'all have a nice trip. Uh, well, we're getting ready to have a war over here. 
and there's going to be destruction over here, and there's bad times over here. And, you know, that's no way to spend the Thanksgiving or Christmas talking about the bad times and the evil times. Because you'll drag everybody down and you'll never be happy. You'll never see any peace if you let the world and the things in the world get you down. You need to rise above what's going on in this world. Amen. You say, how can I rise above? The closer you draw to Jesus, the wiser you'll get. Amen. The closer you get to Jesus, the more peace you'll have. You'll be able to walk through the storm, the worst storm in your life, and you'll be able to hold your head up high and be as happy as you can be because you know that you're a son or a daughter of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. If you've got God on your side, how can you lose? That's right. That's right. If the Lord's on your side and you're on the winning team, how can you go wrong? Amen. Amen. We get so worried about what's all the gas prices going wrong. I'm going to have to buy an electric car. So what if you do? I told him one day I went to Walmart and bought me two. <laughs> I bought me a, a Corvette. I bought my wife a, a four-door Jeep. Come on now. It's kind of hard getting in that little thing, though. I think the top speed for me is about 15 mile an hour. No. No. My wife, she can zoom on down the road. But you got to watch on the interstate, Troy, because them, them big rigs and stuff, they'll almost run you over because they don't see them a little bit of... Uh, cars like that. Y'all ever see them electric cars at Walmart? Yeah. Kind of hard for me to get in and out. <coughs> we bought the best of the best. We got our electric cars. I ain't got to worry about it. You got you one yet, Squatter? No. You better go to Walmart and get you one today. <laughs> we used to buy them for the kids. Now we're going to buy them for us. <laughs> Amen. I was watching documentaries on these electric cars. Electric pickups coming up, and in just a few years, that's all they're going to build. Did you know that? They didn't already said that's all they're going to build unless we get somebody in there who's got some sense to reverse it. That's all they want to build is electric vehicles. But I don't have to worry about it, Joey, because I'm just like my daddy. He said if truck stop goes up, to, the eggs goes up in the truck stop to $100 a dozen, he'd eat the eggs every time he wanted one. And if I got to buy an electric car, I'll buy all I want. Amen. And if I need to buy an electric house, I'll do all I got to do. I'm not going to worry about it. It's not going to affect my day. Right. I remember back years ago, I went to work. And I stopped by Morris Country Store down there. Well, Thomas Terrace down there. Same thing. And I got my boss man a bacon, egg, and cheese, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise sandwich. And that thing was about that thick. They cut that thing in half. <coughs> First thing I done, I walked in the door and I handed him that sandwich and the orange juice. He broke in that thing, man. He started eating that sandwich. I started talking. He said, I ain't got time to listen to you right now. Nothing's going to bother me and my sandwich. Leave me alone. <laughs> he refused to hear anything I said. He said, I'm not going to listen to it. Go ahead. I'm, don't ruin my day. A lot of times the devil will come up and try to ruin your day with some evil thinking. Amen. He'll try to ruin your day with how bad you're going to feel. Uh, we got a new variant coming over from Africa. Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? I've heard this stuff for two years. It ain't affected me a bit. You say, well, I'm a child of God. I'm going to stay healthy just as long and just as well as I can. Let me tell you something, church. I'm not worried about that or a bus running over me or a Mac either one. Because it's when my time to go, that's when I'm going to go. That's right. It could be the heart. It could be anything. But when God calls you home, I don't care what it is, it's your time to go. I'm not worried about death. So many people are focused on death, they don't know how to live anymore. Amen. So many people are focused on the bad times and what's going on in the world, they don't want to leave a house anymore. They're scared, they're upset, they're always worried, they can't never have a good time. Amen. Can't go out to eat no more because you're always worried about the big bill coming up. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, I don't want to go out like that no more. I want to have fun. I want to have a good time. And I want to think on the good things. See, we need to get our mind off the bad things and get our mind on the good things and the good things God has done for us. Amen. How can you be having a bad day, Kate, when you start thinking about that baby? That's right. It can't happen. How can you be having about a bad day or when you start thinking about that little boy holding that guitar up there behind you? 
How can you be having a bad day knowing that somebody loves you? It makes a difference when you know somebody loves you. Amen. We got so much going on, and yet we're focusing on all the bad. The Bible says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein ye have were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I worked up at the oil company at the hardware up there for years, run an oil truck. I come out the office one day as an old black man sitting over on a five-gallon bucket. He was just watching the train. I went over and started talking to him. I said, what you doing? He said, I'm just enjoying my day. He said, I was in prison for 23 years. And he said, I'm just happy to be free. He said, if I sit here and watch a train go by all day, he said, that's just fun. He said, I ain't got to go nowhere. He said, I'm free. He just kept saying to me, I'm free. The day you sit in this church, you're free. Amen. Amen. Sure, you might have a few bills. You might have a few problems. Who don't? You might have a few health issues. Who don't? You might have a few things going wrong at the house. Who cares? Amen. All of us do. We're all going through something. But I, tell, I come here to tell you today, it don't have to drag you down. We can be happy. We can have joy because we know Jesus Christ. We have Jesus and the world is passing by. We don't have to worry about the bad going on in the world. Amen. Amen. I am a prep. I prep. I, I, just like I told you, every time I go to Dollar General, I buy every ham they got. I love them little hams. Beans. Every time I go to Sam's Club, I buy a bill of 20 pounds. I mean, rice, beans, I buy it all. Rice, beans, toilet, big old cases of toilet paper. I love them. I love to go to that place. Bring home a whole tractor trailer load of stuff if I could. <laughs> Wife thinks I'm crazy. But I tell you one thing, she ain't never got to worry about running out of toilet paper. <laughs> she ain't never got to worry about running out of food. I'm going to feed that girl. You can tell we ain't one without food, can't you? I'm going to feed that woman. Amen. She's got plenty of water out there. Yeah, I'm a prepper, but I'm not worried about it. Because even if I didn't have nothing, and Jesus had to send the ravens to feed me. That's right. If he had to rain the manna down out of heaven. Come on. Come on. Amen. I don't care what he had to do. He'd take care of us today. That's right. But as I stand here today, he's taking care of me. Ain't he taking care of you? He said right here, I, respect, I, I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I lived in a trailer most of my life. I lived in the sleeper of a truck for the first 17 years of my life. 36 inch sleeper. I was happy in the sleeper. I was happy in the small 10 by 60 trailer over here. And then God gave me a house. But I was happy in the sleeper, I was happy in the trailer. I could be happy in the house, but if we had to go to a tent, we can still be happy because we got something the world ain't got. That's right. We got Jesus. Amen. It's good, Troy. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Used to go down the road in that truck, looking out the hole of that sleeper while my daddy was driving down the road. I see those old farmhouses. I said, Lord, give me one of those one of these days, please. I'd love to have one of them. I'll take you right to my house tonight, right now, and show you it's exactly what God promised me years ago. What I prayed for, God has sent me. I spoke it into existence. We got to watch what we speak. Because the power of life and death is in the tongue. We cast spells when we speak evil words, evil things, and we think evil thoughts. You say, what do you, they call it spelling, don't they? You ever thought about that? They call it spelling because it casts spells. You can cast good spells. You can talk about good things. Let's talk good things. Amen. Always talking evil everywhere we go. Boy, I just know I'm going to die today. <laughs> I just know I'm going to get robbed and mugged today. I can't go downtown. I'm going to get shot. <laughs> oh, the Mexicans is coming up over the border. They're going to take everything we got. Oh, blah, blah, this. Oh, bad, this. Oh, bad day. Hey, let's talk. When's the last time somebody just was happy around you? Amen. 
When's the last time you was a happy person somebody wanted to be around? We're not. People walk the other way than to come see us. You say, why? Because we're miserable. When you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you'll live a very miserable life. When you're not in the word of God, you'll be very miserable. We need to learn whatever state we're in to be content and be happy. You might not be happy doing the job you're in right now, but God has other plans for you. You might not be happy where you're at in life right now, but God has better plans for you. We need to be thankful and we need to be happy. I know both how to be abased and I know both how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. All things. I'm not the man I used to be. My mind wants to run, jump, and play, but my body a lot of times don't want to. Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? But a lot of times we'll let our body dictate. Daddy always said, don't let your body dictate to you what you're going to do. And yeah, sometimes it might get hard walking around the mall that extra few steps. Sometimes we might get a little hurt. Sometimes we might not feel like it. But I want you to remember you can do all things in Christ who strengthens you. Amen. You can go through all things who, with Christ who strengthens you. See, when you get a little older and the, the red lights come on your dashboard, on your body, things start to change. These young folks don't know that right now because they don't feel a lot of things we felt. But I want you to know you keep on keeping on. And you keep on living for the Lord daily. And you give him the very best you've got. And you be as happy as you can each and every day of your life. Because this might be the last day you live on this earth. Amen. You know, when I had that heart problem. And that mail truck. I never knew that would be the last day I'd work. Never knew. I shook people's hand. I've talked to them on the phone, and that was the last time I ever heard from them again. Mm -hmm. People passing on by. This might be your last time we're all here together in this one place. <coughs> I never dreamed that Wayne Cassidy would go as quick as he did. I thought, you know, I never knew my dad would go like he went. The last time I saw him, we was in Morrison's cafeteria or that cafeteria up here in Roanoke and he had his brown leather jacket on and he walked up and hugged me and told me he loved me. That was the last time I got to hug my dad. This might be the last day you get to spend with the ones you love. This might be the last church service you get to spend with each the one sitting next to you. Might be the last day on earth. If you knew this was the last day, last opportunity you had, wouldn't you do a little different? Just a few weeks ago, she was in here teaching a lesson. Warren Bass at the house where she was here teaching Bible study. She didn't know when she went to work that day it'd be the last day she got to see her husband. Are you living your life to the fullest? Or are you always dreading, upset, and miserable to be around? You need to change the way you think. You need to change the way you talk. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Don't sit around talking bad things all the time. Be a, be a pleasure to be around. Be happy. Be someone somebody's looking forward. You know, I always love to see Rayford Fleshman's name come across my phone. Because the first thing he always tells me is he loves me. People are watching you. People want to see something good in you, DJ. But are we giving the people what they need? Or are we bringing them down? If there's anything good, anything honest, anything just, anything faithful, think on the good things. Think on all the good things God has done for you. You get feeling upset and worried, down, 
Think about the good things God's doing for you, what God has given you. When you get to thinking about all the goodness, all the good things, how can you be sad? How can you be down? Let me tell you, we can go one more day. I woke up this morning, first thing I said, thank you, Lord, for one more day. I didn't have to do it, but you did. Thank you. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you for being who you are. When you leave this church, remember, you can change people's lives the way you talk and the way you act around them. Do the very best you can for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every head bowed and everybody pray. Don't be a drag to be around. Don't be unhappy and miserable all the time. You got everything in the world. You have eternal salvation through Jesus Christ your Lord. God has blessed you. And if there, there is a week to be thankful, Thanksgiving ought to be every day of the week, every day of the month, every day of the year. That's the kind of heart we need to have, a heart full of thanksgiving. Just want to thank you, Lord, for all the times you heard me pray. Thank you, Lord, for always being there. Lord, when I was down and out, you came around and made me want to shout. I just want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have a need today, if you want salvation, Lord, anything you need in this place, come for it. I'll be glad to pray with you. Healing for your body, financial blessing. My God does it all. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. If any leaving, it's you. If any running off, it's you. He said, I'll, I'll be with you. I'll be sticking with you closer than a brother. Jesus loves you today. What are you doing for him? All oh, hearts and minds are clear. I'm going to ask my son to lead us in the Lord in prayer. This is his service. Thank you for coming today. Lord, I thank you for the day that you prepared for us. We just want to give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, you've been so good to us in times we didn't deserve it. We thank you for it today. Lord, I ask that you would bless each individual that come to your house this morning. Lord, the ones that are sick, I ask that you would bless them. Lord, I pray that we can go out and out of these doors and have a good report everywhere we go. Lord, I ask that you would keep us.